Similar to other programming languages, loops in PHP are used to execute statements multiple times. PHP supports the following loops. We have the while loop, do while loop, for loop, and for each loop. Let's go over the while loop first. So I'm going to create a simple counter and print digits up to 15. So we're going to have the variable i equals to zero, and then while i is less than or equal to 15, echo out i and increment the value. If we refresh the page, we get digits zero through 15. As you can see, the syntax of the while loop is similar to the if conditional statement that we went over in the last video. You start with the while keyword followed by the parentheses, which contains the conditional expression. And as long as this expression evaluates to true, it will keep on running the statements that are contained within the curly braces. This conditional expression is evaluated at the beginning of every iteration. And as soon as it evaluates to false, then the loop will stop. If this expression evaluates to false the very first time, then the loop will actually never run. So for example, if I set i equals to 20 and refresh the page, we get nothing. If I forgot to increment the variable i here, this would introduce something called an infinite loop. And an infinite loop is something that will continuously run your statements because the expression will always evaluate to true. In this case, we're not modifying the variable i and i is always equal to zero and this expression will always be true. And this could actually harm your application. Though there are some use cases for infinite loops and you might have seen somewhere before uh, something like while true being used. One of those use cases for the infinite loops is when you want to wait for some something to happen and then conditionally break out of the loop using the break statement. So for example, in here, we could do if i is greater than or equal to 15, break. And then we also need to increment the variable i. And if we refresh the page, we get digits 0 through 14. The break statement here accepts an optional argument. And that argument by default is set to 1. But it could pass another numeric argument, for example, 2. And what this will do is that it will break out of multiple nested loops. In this case, it does not make sense because we only have a single loop. But if we had something like a nested loop here, for example, while i is greater than 10 and then did break 2 here, whenever i here is going to be over 10, we're going to break out of two levels of loops. And in this case, this loop and this loop. If we did it the other way and just use the default uh, argument, which is 1, then only this loop would be broken out of and we would still be left with an infinite loop. So if we refresh the page, we're only getting the numbers up to 10. You could also skip the current loop iteration by using the continue statement and move on to the next iteration. For example, if we change this back to i less than or equal to 15 and remove the break statement, here we could say that if i is an even number, then continue. Now this actually is introducing an infinite loop here because i initially is set to 0 and 0 is an even number and therefore it will just skip this iteration and move on to the next iteration. In this case though, we are not incrementing i because we're incrementing i down below here and continue just skips everything below it. So we're just moving on to the next iteration and i is a again zero and it will just keep on doing that over and over again therefore resulting in an infinite loop to fix this we either need to increment i right before here before the if conditional or we could just increment i before the continue as well if we refresh the page now we're only getting the odd numbers we could add the comma here to distinguish between the numbers and it looks correct similar to break statement continue also accepts an optional argument which will allow you to continue multiple nested loops php also has an alternative syntax to while loops similar to the if conditionals that are mainly used when embedding PHP within HTML. Instead of opening curly brace, you could do colon, and instead of the closing curly brace, you could do end while and semicolon. And this will work the same way. The do while loop is similar to while loop, with the main difference being that the do while loop guarantees that the statements within the loop will execute at least once, because this conditional expression here is checked at the end of an iteration instead of the beginning. As you remember in the while loop, if the conditional expression evaluated to default, in the beginning, then the loop would never run. In the do while, however, the echo statement here will execute the first time, and then it will check the conditional expression and decide if it needs to run again. In this case, we're getting digits 0 through 15. If we change this to something like 25, then this will evaluate to false, but the echo statement will still execute one time. Let's move on to the for loops. For loops are a bit more complicated than while or do while loops. It takes three expressions that are separated by semicolons. The first expression, which is this, only evaluates the first time. Second expression is the conditional expression and it is evaluated at the beginning of each iteration. And finally, the third expression is evaluated at the end of each iteration. So as you can see on the right side, we have digits printed 0 through 14 because here we're creating a variable i and assigning 0 to it. Then we're checking if 
i is less than 15 and then incrementing i. Each of these expressions can be empty, they're not required. So for example, we could set it like this and this would work just fine. This is essentially same thing as while true, it's just an infinite loop. They could also contain multiple expressions separated by commas. So you could do something like print i and then increment i. So we can comment out this echo i and if we refresh the page, we get the exact same output. If you had multiple expressions within the conditional expression here, the evaluation whether the loop should continue or not will be determined by the last expression. So for example, we could do print i here and then comma and let's remove it from here. If we refresh the page, notice that before the last number was 14 and now the last number is 15. The reason for that is because the conditional expression is ran for each iteration and the last iteration, which is i less than 15, is being checked after we're printing it. For loops can also be used to iterate over strings and print out each character or iterate over arrays. Let me show an example. So let's say we have some text equals to hello world then here we can do i less than string length of text and i plus plus and print each character on its own line if we refresh the page we get each character on its own line if we change this to an array then we can change the string length to count because count returns the length of an array and this can stay same and if we refresh we get elements of an array printed out of course you could do the same thing using the do while or the while loops now this has a performance issue here as you know conditional expressions run at the beginning of each iteration so we're calling the function count here for each iteration in this case we're only calling it four times which is not that big of a deal but in the cases where your array might be too big or your function call might be expensive this might cause some performance issues in my opinion it is always a good practice to not make any unnecessary function calls so instead of doing this what you could do is you could create a variable called length and assign that variable within the first expression of the loop so you could do length equals to count text and as you know the first expression only runs the first time so the count will only be called once and if we refresh we get the exact same thing. Another option is that instead of putting it within the for loop, you could just put it above the loop like this. And if we refresh, we get the same output. Note that the performance issue does not only apply to the for loop, you could have the same performance issue when using while or do while loops. And finally, let's move on to the for each loop. For each loop is used to iterate over arrays or objects. So for example, let's create an array of programming languages and print each language on its own line. So the syntax is for each and within the parentheses we put the iterable expression and in this case it's just an array variable so we're going to put the programming languages then we use as and then some kind of variable so in this case let's call it language and then we can echo out language and then a new line we refresh the page and we get each programming language on its own line so what's happening here is that on every iteration it's assigning the value of the current element in an array to the variable language if you try to use for each on something that's not an array or not an object it will give you an error so for example if we put some scalar data here something like test and we refresh we're going to get the warning you could also access the keys of the arrays by using the key variable here and then equal sign and greater than sign and of course the variable names here can be anything it doesn't have to be key or the language it could be anything that you want and this is familiar to you because that's how we define the key value pairs within the arrays when you were creating the arrays in this case this is an indexed array so the key would be just numeric index so this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we could do key and we refresh. We get 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, as I mentioned, in each iteration, the current element of the array is assigned to this variable here and it's assigned by value. However, you're able to assign that by reference by adding an ampersand here. And this basically just assigns the value of the current element by reference, which means that if you modify this, it will actually modify the original array. For example, we can set the language to PHP and let's comment this out and then we can do print our programming languages right after and we see that all the elements are PHP now if we don't do it by reference and we do it by value when we refresh the page the original array is not changed a quick note here that the array variable here in this case the language variable will remain after the for each loop is complete let me remove this here and we can do echo language right after the loop and let's keep this uh, echo statement here if we refresh the page we get 0 1 2 3 4 and then we also get rust this variable does not get destroyed after the for each loop which means that if you decided to use this variable somewhere else or you 
made a typo and you use this variable instead of another variable, this could cause some issues in your code, especially when you're working with the references. So when you're working with something like this, this variable does not get destroyed. So if you did something like language equals to PHP here, and then we did print R programming languages, you'll see that the last item gets changed to PHP. The last item was Rust and now we got changed to PHP because this language is still the reference to the last element in the array and in this case it's Rust and Rust gets changed to PHP. What I do in these cases is that if I decide to use the reference here after for each loop I usually just destroy the variable using unset and that way I'm sure that this will no longer overwrite anything in the programming languages. So if I refresh now we get Rust back. Another good use case for for each loops is to iterate over associative arrays. So for example, let's say we had an user variable and let's say we had some properties here like name, email, and skills. And then we could use the for each loop to iterate over those properties. So we could do for each user as key value and then we could echo key colon value and a new line we refresh the page and we're getting the name we're getting the email but we're getting this warning array to string conversion and that's expected because this value here is an array one way to solve this is by using something called json encode so you could just encode this into a json and print it out that way in other ways you could use implode but i would use implode only if it's an array so i would first check if is array value 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 equals to implode value and then just print it out this way or you could just simply iterate over the value you could just have nested for each loop here for each value as skill and just echo out skill and some kind of separator and then remove that and we could improve this like that and remove this from here if it's not an array we could just echo out the value the way it is now if we refresh the page everything works as expected so it's really up to you how you want to handle these kind of cases there is also an alternative syntax for four for each and also for loop so instead of the open curly brace here you could do the colon and instead of the end curly brace you could do end for each and we refresh it works the same way and same goes for the for loop so here also you could have the alternative syntax using the colon and end for and it would work the same way so thank you so much for watching this is it for this video in the next video we're going to talk about the switch and match control structures and match is something that was introduced in php 8 and is pretty cool i hope you enjoyed this episode please hit like and subscribe and i will see you on the next one